This is Anthony Pettis. I'm Sergio Pettis, and you're watching Celebrity Sweat. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Celebrity Sweat. I am Jake the Trainer. We're here in beautiful Franklin, Wisconsin, right outside of Milwaukee at Bridgewater Performance, AKA the home of the Pettis Brothers, Anthony and Sergio. You guys are gonna get an awesome treat today. We're gonna show you how they work out. We're gonna talk to them, and I hear that they just started warming up. Why don't we go inside and let's get to it. Let's go. All right, ready, six and six? Remember, let the knee follow the toe, right? Let your knee follow the toe. Open up, down, up, six and six. Yep, squeeze, push through your heels too. Stay balanced. So, so what are we having the guys do here, coach? So right now we're doing like a split squat for almost like a fighter stance, right? Right. So we'll get them used to bending this way versus a traditional squat. Sometimes we'll do a traditional squat, but right now it's more getting ready for a fight camp. Absolutely. So I, I try to make it relevant to what we're doing Absolutely. For, for the cage. And, and how many reps do you guys normally do of, the, of an exercise like this? Uh, right now we're doing six and six because it equals 12. Perfect. Right? So we try to stay in like the eight to 15 range, just depending on exactly what we're doing. Absolutely. Now we're gonna come get an explosive movement right now. Hop up and squeeze those cheeks, right? Squeeze your cheeks. Push the ground away from you and squeeze your cheeks. Remember, just 10. That's the added resistance, huh? Added resistance, yep. Yeah. Power through, it's all hip explosion. Especially for a guy who kicks people from the cage. <laughs> off the cage. All right, now 12, 12 knees each side. You guys each got a box. Drive it, drive that knee. Yeah, no, keep it up. Keep the foot up, Serge, keep the foot up. Yep, yeah, drive the knee, keep it up, 12 and 12. Right after, similar, active, 45 second rest. Stay moving. Light on your feet. Light on your feet. It's almost like you want to push the box through the turf, right? 12 on each, 12 on each. Just when you get that first leg, then that second leg has to go and it's like, oh right? man. That's, a, that's good. And coach, the benefit of these three together these three together, so like I said, I like to do what's called contrast training. So right now we did a weighted exercise, a power banded, almost like a plyometric exercise uh, with just a body weight exercise. That's amazing. And then we're gonna get 45 seconds in between. Like I said, stay active. Stay active, stay bouncing, keep the shoulders loose. Even though we're not doing upper body, we still gotta use it together. How many rounds do you guys do, coach? We do four. Four rounds. We do four because in a fight, right, most fights that are non-title fights three. are three rounds. Right. Um, so what I go ahead and do is I do four rounds just to get them the extra That's credit. That's great. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, stay moving, stay moving. Five, four, three, two, open up those hips, let's get it. Like I said, open up those hips and make sure your toes are in line with your knee and your knees in line with your toe, right? So if we're turning out, we're both squatting so the knee follows the toe. There you go. Three, two, one. Front squat, let's keep the hips close. Feet hip width, hip width. A little bit closer, Serge. There you go. Short burst, not all the way down, just short here. Power, power from here to here. That's it. Just eight of them. Now we'll go snap down, depth jump, okay? Five and five. Five and five, yep, same leg, five. Snap it, tuck it. There you go, right back up. Snap it, tuck it. Is this agility, coach? It is agility. It works on their deceleration as well. So many times we're, as fighters, or I don't care what sport you play, we're so used to like 
moving forward and so the right. starting, we right. don't ever work on stopping. Very true. So right now, this is more of a call, like a deceleration drill into a, a re-acceleration. Interesting. And this after those front squats is very challenging, huh? Yes, very challenging. And then we're going to go right into a squatted high pull kettlebell swing, which is something that a lot of people don't see, but it's more of a defense mechanism to get, mm. get you used to coming from here and getting your hands right into a, like a defensive position for fighting. Wow. So a lot of movements as a fighter we mimic as a basketball player, as a uh, um, football player, so uh, hockey, doesn't matter what sport you play. However, I try to take it and mimic it, even like different stances and things like that to mimic the actual fight. Right. Now just eight of them, guys. Remember, instead of a hinge like a normal swing, it's more of a squat down, right back and get them hands up. It's basically to mimic getting your hands in a protective matter for your faces. There you go. Just eight of them, then we're gonna take 45 second rest. Was it on purpose that you have the, the part where it simulates protecting your face at the end of the round? At the end of the on round purpose? when they're tired. That's awesome. I, I wanted to have this happen when they're dog tired. Right. So it mimics that in the, this, in the fight at the end. 45 seconds, stay active, catch your breath. How important is that staying active? Uh, That's the most important thing, huh? It, it, is, it is important because it's almost like hit training in a sense, um, as I want them to keep their heart rate up, but also let it come back down, if that makes sense. So Absolutely. instead of just sitting down and having the muscles stiffen up, I keep them moving around so they can stay relaxed. So Absolutely. Like we kind of spoke about before, like when you're fighting, it's staying in level three. Gear three is kind of like what they like to call it. So like while you're getting hit and stuff, you can take that and not like stay like Glad super, right. oh, super true. hyperactive and things mm. like that. So if they're moving while their heart rate's up, it's, it's kind of mimicking that in between the fight. Wow. So like I said, it's hard to actually mimic the mat out here. Absolutely. Because there's nothing like it, to nothing. be honest. Right. I mean, I've grappled and stuff with them before, and there's a reason why I don't do that. There's a reason why I stay over here, but it's good. Guys, five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Remember, a little bit more narrow, a little bit more narrow. Eight of them. So right now we're gonna do little, like more mobility stuff. So we will stretch, but I always like to do like a mobility thing and like activate what we just used. So definitely, it's almost like an active cool down. Should you call it that? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Work with the band and let the band pull you back. So almost like fight it a little bit naturally to feel that hamstring. You feel the hamstring? Yeah. Yep. It's basically like, it's like cooking, right? You have all your ingredients and then now you're seasoning it. You oh, for sure. I mean? That's well said, absolutely. Especially after all the, the first two circuits. The first, yeah, which feel like Which feel like 10 circuits probably. Right. <laughs> yeah. We try to. All right, chamber it up. Yep, chamber up, just tap and right back. You should feel the burn at about five or six. And this gets the hip flexor, Coach? It gets the hip flexors going. A lot of times when they kick, too, it's, it's every muscle that they use. It's called chamber. So the chamber before you any type of kick is. Try not to open that hip. Try to come straight up and straight back. All right, two jogs down and back. And Coach, walk me through the jog part of it. Is that to keep that body moving still? Just to keep the body, keep the body moving. moving. Get keep ready the body for the next moving. Yeah, so. I don't want to add too much strenuous, strenuous cardio because we've already did, done a lot of totally. stuff like that. So yeah, just to keep their active. It's not even a rest, it's just, just to keep them more active. So. Yeah. Yep, Absolutely. so then they'll come right back here, work on more stabilization and, and uh, mobility, and then jog a little bit. Basically jog the lactic acid out, let it, Absolutely. Let it just disperse back into the body, and then we'll hit it again. That's so. great. Yep. That's great. Hey guys, 15 seconds, we're good. Catch, take your time. So coach, I uh, see we're onto the stretch now. Let's talk a little about the importance of stretching. Obviously, one of the more overlooked things in working out, people always forget about it, but it's so important, right? Even more maybe than working out. Well, exactly. So people forget how important recovery is in general. Just sleep, nutrition, and then stretching. So before the exercises and stuff like that, they rolled out instead of doing more of a dynamic stretch. But I, will, I personally, as a trainer, will only static stretch post-workout mm. because I always tell people you never want to like stretch out a cold muscle. You think about a rubber band. 
I, I look at like a rubber band. If you put it in the freezer and try to stretch, it's going to break. Absolutely. Right? But when it's already warm, it's definitely going to stretch. So we definitely, definitely, definitely like to stretch the muscles. Some people, too, like to get like massages and stuff after workout. I try to tell them don't. Your muscles are beat up enough. Right? So I would say wait till the next day and or before the workout. Mm -hmm. So just if anybody has any questions that way. But yeah, it's so important to, to get more of a static stretch to like lengthen the muscle and stuff like that. Absolutely. Five, four, three, two. Now bring an arm under. Three, two, one, switch. What's an ideal amount of time people should spend stretching, coach? Uh, about three to five minutes. Three to five minutes, Three yeah. to five minutes. Uh, you also, just like you can overtrain, you want to overstretch, especially sure. when you just beat the heck out of your muscles. <laughs> if you don't feel it enough, bring your toe towards your chin. I usually pick about four to five different things, just depending on what we do. Feel that? Flexible, it's good. A lot of times too, people, if, like, if they don't feel the stretch, because they're like ultra flexible, it's still working, regardless sure. if you feel it or not. All right, we're almost done. Now we're gonna bring this foot up here. Five, four, three, two. Nice work. Thank you. Nice work. Appreciate you. Yes, sir, as always. I don't know about you guys, that was tough. I'm tired watching that. I know I'm in a gym, but you're not. So let's think about this for a second, okay? I'm gonna show you guys a few things that you just saw the Pettis brothers do, and now you can do them right in your own home, okay? So just listen for a quick second. You saw some front squats with our feet turned out to the side. Those are great. Those work a lot of the front of the quad, and that's a great big leg muscle. You also have the back, which is the hamstring and the butt muscles. Together, they're one big force. You saw a lot of explosive deadlifts where they have to bring the deadlift up and protect their face. A lot of hamstrings and butt as you go up and down. Lastly, you saw the jumping up and down. That takes a lot of calves, okay? So all the leg muscles work together. I'm gonna show you a few things you can do at home to replicate those if you don't have all the same equipment, okay? So all I have is a chair. Grab a chair from the kitchen, from the closet, from your storage, and take it out. We're gonna do three things together, okay? I'm gonna point the chair facing one way. I'm gonna keep my feet even on the sides. My toes are slightly pointed, just like the Pettis brothers were. And I'm gonna touch my butt down to the chair and then come back up for one. Let's try 10 of these. Now, while I'm doing this, notice my knees aren't coming inward like that. That's asking for a knee injury. So let's keep our knees going over the toe line, out to the side. If your toes are pointed, your knees gotta follow the toes, okay? So after you get to 10 of those, take a breather, have a little water, that's great. Let's talk about number two. I'm gonna hold my chair with both hands. I'm gonna touch my heel to my butt, and then I'm gonna go straight back, okay? So my left leg only, I'm gonna go heel to my butt, back down, one. Heel to my butt, back down, two. You don't have to go fast but slow and steady wins the race here. So 10 of these on the left side, and then right when you finish, 10 on the right side. Heel to my butt, straight back. Heel to my butt, straight back. And lastly, but not least, all I'm gonna do is just keep my hand on the chair for balance. I'm gonna point my feet inwards, and I'm just gonna lift my heels off the ground. There's one, down, two, down, three, down. Only 10 of these, nothing crazy, but if you do some of those moves that'll work the quads, the hamstrings, and the calves together, giving you a great workout at home. So give it a shot, let us know what you think, okay? And I know what you're thinking. You wanna hear from the brothers. So don't go anywhere, because after the break, we'll be right back sitting down with the boys themselves. Welcome back to Celebrity Sweat. Well, we just finished the physical training, and guys, Anthony, Sergio, that was insane. How do you guys feel? Dead. <laughs> same, same. Sums it up. Man, I thought after that first round, it was like, okay, guys, great workout. And then he said, there's another round, and then another round. That was a lot of stuff. What did you guys feel the most working in? Was it mainly, it was obviously legs, but did you guys have the cardio going? What was the most challenging part of the, uh, the workout? Yeah, a little bit of all of it, honestly. Like, the legs start burning, the cardio plays into there, then the mindset starts kicking in, and you're like, man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I had so much more to do after this. So it's like a little bit of everything in all those workouts. Absolutely. It feels like a fight, honestly. Like, you got to go in there, your body's dying, and you still got to get to that objective and still win. So it's a, definitely a men mental battle, too. Absolutely. And one of the most important things, and I, and I think you can see that you guys were doing 
doing it all the time is moving and and you know between rounds and fights you know in in the rounds even you know it's so important you don't want to ever stay stagnant you know so can you talk a little about the importance of always kind of being moving and you know you heard coach talking about the active rest and not always you know staying still keeping the muscles going what's the importance behind that and what what also kind of can you guys say that that leads with into kind of for a fight yeah, for us, I mean, for me, like, I really focus on the, the heart rate. So, like, when I'm doing my workouts, I know, like, when, my, when I start doing active stuff, the blood starts pumping. The quicker I can control my heart rate and bring my heart rate down, the quicker the muscles are going to feel normal again. Because in a fight, like, your legs feel like cement. You're like, dang, I can't move. You go through a position, a scramble, and then you get back up, and you're like, so you got to really train your body to get that heart rate back down so you these legs can start feeling normal again, your body feel normal again. So, like, literally every day I'm training that process every time I go through my movements. Absolutely. Yeah, for me, um, when I move, I feel like I'm, I'm more loose. It keeps me uh, less um, tense in there, you know, and there it's really easy to get tense and to lose your movement, and that's when it starts to get into your head. The more I move, the more I'm myself, and the more I'm kind of just kind of dancing almost, you know, just Definitely. feeling the vibe. And the one thing you guys can't do inside of a training or a practice is kind of simulate that adrenaline, yeah. right? And that adrenaline is so tough to kind of realize what it actually plays a role. Uh, but how would you guys say you train for that adrenaline? It's kind of hard to answer that. But is there a special thing you guys have, whether it's mentally, physically? How do you train for the adrenaline? I feel like now that I have, I have 25 fights now, so now it's not as bad as it was in the beginning. Like, I mean, it still has that, that, that waiting game, you know, in the back, you're waiting for the fight, you're ANC, you know. But as soon as that music comes on for me and I start moving, I, I'm just in the zone, you know, I'm, I'm there, I'm present, so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm into like 30 something fights now. So I, I, I've had so many, so many experiences at the highest levels. I fought in Japan with like 50,000 people. I fought in Las Vegas with, you know, 10 people in there for this, this like last event. And uh, you really can't focus on that part of it. Like if you start focusing on, man, I'm not like amped up, I'm not ready to go, then you, it changes everything. Because you're so like focused on why I'm not feeling that pressure, that like anxiety. Like, right. so like I try not to like, like literally I try to keep my workouts the same as possible. So like whether I am excited or I'm just chilling, I still have a, a good performance. And when you guys are walking out, getting ready for your name to be called, getting ready for the fight to start, what is your mind like? What is your, what are you thinking in your head? What do you think? Uh, I'm like, I, ho I hope I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> like literally all this, all these days right here, yeah. like, like the, the Sundays that were showing up and like doing these leg workouts, that all comes to mind. Like you, like you really gotta convince yourself, like there's no lying at that point. It's the most moment of truth ever. Like I'm about to walk out in front of the world that I do all the work as my body prepared to go to war, like war, literally war in front of everybody. So like for us, like once, once you end that fight, everybody sees the results. So like when I come to this gym, everybody saw what happened. So I'm like, either my head's gonna be high or I'm gonna be a little like, ah. Oh. So like you're thinking about all that process, man. And like with social media now, there's so much access to us where like, it all plays in there. So like, I, I'm learning like now to control that. And like, I, the biggest thing you can control is being present. If you can be present, now I can actually like really fight this fight. If I'm like thinking about all these other things and like, like so I always try to bring myself to a present moment. I try to like meditate a little bit before, look at myself in the mirror and then react from there. Absolutely, it's so important. I saw, you know, you guys have a sign outside on the door. It says you versus you. Mm -hmm. It's important, you know, you're obviously fighting your opponent. But come on, you know, fighting yourself is almost just as tough, if not harder. That's what so training you, camp is, right? man. Training camp is literally a fight with yourself. Like, like the dieting, the nutrition, the waking up and doing the running. Like, you, like you're training your mind and you become like a rock. Like, you're just like, yo, if I don't want to do it, it doesn't matter. I have to do it. And that's what happens in the fight. Like, whoever can do that more, that just, it's another weapon in a fight. Yes. Yep. And, and right along with the training, you know, you have to understand, and you guys will speak better than anyone at this, is that the nutrition has to be right in line, too. Talk about the role nutrition has in terms of whether you're in fight camp, whether you're getting ready for the fight the day before, or whether you're not, you know, getting in the off season, getting ready for the next few months. Yeah, so off season, I live a pretty normal life. You know, yeah. I, uh, we cut so much weight for each fight, I have to cut about like 30 to 35 pounds. Right. So after that, you know, you want to enjoy food, but um, just to feel the difference from um, being, you know, living kind of a normal, almost like unhealthy life, you know, eating whatever I want to a strict diet is, so different, you know, I'm a whole different person. Different. The mentality is different. I can sleep better. I have more energy. Um, I, I don't know, it just makes me, um, when, I'm on, when I'm on my A game and my nutrition, I just feel amazing, honestly, honestly. Absolutely. This is weird, but it makes me realize how much um, food and like, like uh, is controlled by finances. Mm. Like all these commercials, like literally when you, when you cut weight, you'll notice how all many commercials are about food. And you're just like, dude, like <laughs> everything on TV is about some kind of consumption, like a food, a burger, a new soda, a new like, like man, like, so like when he, when he says like a normal diet, like I feel like we're brainwashed to have like this idea of like, this is normal eating. When really it's like, it's business, you know what I'm saying? So like, I think once you can actually do a, a training camp and you like starve yourself and you see like, you, can, you look at it from an outside view and like you see how it actually works. You're like, man, like this is like crazy how much, 
we're brainwashed to think that's a normal lifestyle of eating and how we should eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. Like, and like when you're, you only can see that when you're starving and you're like in that spot of like, man, I'm like, it's spiritual, I, I, yeah, yeah, that, that's a spiritual <laughs> spot. And then like yeah. that first drink of water is like heaven. You're like, man, that's how we're supposed to be living, man. That's like yeah. that, that clean feeling is how you're supposed to be living a life. And imagine the growth you could have if you could stay on that, you know, yeah. that's, that's I mean, stuff yeah. I thought about. So yeah. overlooked, and, and food is so important, but then you, like we are just talking about, and we spoke a little bit about it before, is water. So yeah. important, you know. Not only is it important for the muscularity and for the endurance, but for weight cutting especially too, right? How does water play a role for you guys? Yeah, us as fighters, man, we do, uh, well, a lot of fighters do this. Wrestlers do it too, boxers, but um, MMA is probably the biggest, like, uh, weight cutting game. Right. Like, they, they started playing a huge weight cutting game. So, like, a guy who fights at 155 pounds, probably walks like 190 pounds. Mm. Right? So he's cutting all the way down for one day, balloons back up and fights. So like water for us now, we do a water cut. So we do like a water load, two gallons a day from like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We cut off, uh, we go down to one gallon, half gallon, no water, no sodium, and it drops about 15 pounds. Wow. So like yeah. we're playing that game. So we're doing that game on top of getting ready for a fight, on top of fighting our mind. And so so much that goes into this. Yeah, it's a lot that goes into this. Yeah. That's insane. And then, the, and then the last part is the recovery, right? Yeah. So when you have the nutrition down, you saw the training down, the recovery is in, in incredibly important. Sauna, I know you guys do hot tub, cryo chambers. What's your guys' favorite way to recover? Massages, I love massages, Absolutely. honestly. Just uh, weeks of getting beat up, you know, massages is my go-to. Yeah, I think there's nothing like somebody who really knows body work. Like yeah. they can actually like understand injuries and like, um, there's there's really good uh, therapists uh, like out that work with Olympic athletes that saw like a lot of injuries because MMA is like wrestling, taekwondo, kickboxing right. all in one. So there's like a whole bunch of injuries that a lot of people don't like really like this. So like people that see a lot like that can deal with a lot of them. Best best kind of rehab for me. But I spend a lot of money on rehab. You know, I have a hyperbaric chamber. Um, I do the uh, the cryo spa. I do the massages. The uh, all all that kind of PT stuff. Um, Longevity for us, you know, if the, if the longer I can last in this sport, the more money I make, the more Absolutely. I can leave a legacy on my, this, this town, you know, so Absolutely. it's awesome. That's what it's about, is giving back Definitely. and putting the imprint. And last but not least, if you guys were not fighters, what would we be doing? What sport? Will we be having a sport we'd play? Honestly, I don't know. I'm only 5'6", so I think, I think, <laughs> I think a fight is all I was, really. That's, awesome. That's all I had. That's yeah, awesome. no, awesome. That's okay. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, honestly, I don't know. We were really yeah. into basketball. Like growing up, I was really yeah. into basketball, man. So I played basketball a lot, but um, I was never, again, I wasn't tall enough to like make it competitively. But um, <laughs> you were solid, actually. I was pretty good. Yeah, I played good. Being in a good basketball town now, you got yeah, you know, yeah. the Bucks, you got Giannis, that's a great team to root for. And you guys, hey, that's hero. awesome. Tyler yeah, Hero, Tyler Hero. Absolutely. Yeah, so Milwaukee's on the map right now. So it's, uh, yeah, but I probably, I, I mean, I'd probably be pursuing some kind of basketball, but yeah. I mean, fighting is like one of them things, like once you, once you start it, you just get consumed by it. And there's so many different ways to watch it. Boxing, kickboxing, uh, mixed martial arts, jiu-jitsu matches, like, and little wrestling now. Like, when I see these kids come train, I'm like, man, like, that's yeah, YouTubers boxing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So it's crazy. It's a, fun, it's a really fun place, man. I'm blessed to be, like, we're blessed to be where we're at. I get to share it with him, man. It's like a great life. Seriously. Well, you guys saw the training. You guys listened to the mindset behind the Pettis Brothers. Take it into your life. Let yourself grow as a person and as an athlete, and you'll see some really nice changes happen. We will see you soon.